Okay, this FAQ is, do you say, you at the good dog, say that dogs can have no affection or bed and couch time? Good question. So affection is really going to be determined by your dog, the relationship and the problems that you're having, right? So affection is a really powerful tool, powerful to help your dog do better or to have your dog move in the opposite direction of doing worse. So we want to use affection in that powerful role as something that helps you and your dog be more successful. So if you've had a dog that's been bratty, pushing boundaries, disrespectful, insecure, you know, pretty much running the gamut of most behavior problems, giving affection just willy-nilly tends to be a negative, tends to reinforce a lot of negative states that they're in. So what we would recommend for affection stuff is that we're using it really cautiously. So that doesn't mean you can't, you can't share affection. It means that we're gonna use it very selectively for improving our dog's behavior rather than possibly taking our dogs backwards, right? And that's gonna really be on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you've got a dog that's like the biggest, brattiest dog in the world, your affection level is probably gonna be pretty low. If you've got a dog that's just, you know, having, having issues that are, that are less relationship-centric, um, the affection levels might be able to be higher. It's gonna be very dependent on your dog and your personal situation. As for couches, beds, furniture, stuff like that, we don't have a hard and fast rule for that. It really, once again, depends on your dog and your situation. So if your dog is growling when anybody tries to get on the couch um, or challenging you guys in any context or any other situation in your life, being disrespectful relationship-wise, then furniture and access to that kind of stuff can be a real mixed message that can take your dog in the wrong direction, right? So if your dog is disrespectful, jumping on people, growling at anybody, being a resource guarder, uh, whatever it might be, if he's allowed on the bed or the couch, even, even just with an invitation, that can still blur the lines for the dog and create a sense of entitlement and empowerment and blur the lines of human world and dog world, in which case you can find yourself moving backwards and your dog struggling more than he needs to. So the whole goal is to just ensure that we make it as easy for you and your dog to do, as, uh, to do the best they can using all the tools and all the strategies the best we can. The reality is that taking away affection or taking away bedtime or couch time or any of that, all those privileges, this is really just a means to an end. We're not looking to like have you never be affectionate to your dog again. That's yeah. a silly thing. That's not anything. That's not the reason why we get dogs. Yeah. So all of this, you know, when people ask about affection or ask about any of that, the reality is we're just looking for the training time right now. And maybe it'll be a year of you giving less affection to your dog because he's been... Or selective yeah, affection. Yeah, selective affection. When maybe for four or five years, he's gotten affection all the time. And that's kind of been the undoing. So now we kind of need to turn it all around. We're doing a whole rehab, a whole kind of clean slate process. So that's why we take away affection. You'll hear some trainers that are just like hard and fast rule, no affection, no dogs get nothing. We're definitely not those trainers. Yeah. So we give our dogs tons of access to bed, couch, tons of affection, but that's because they're great balanced dogs. And so we're looking for you to have the same thing and then they can earn that stuff and you can earn it as well. And that's really the trick. What Laura said is that you have to get the good stuff first, then you can give the rewards, then you can give the privileges, then you can give the freedom. But if you've got a mess on your hands, having all that freedom and access makes it worse. Yeah. So let's get everything really nice, get it really straight, and then we can start sharing more rewards, more affection, more freedom, more access, stuff like that. And then once again, it's gonna really depend on your dog. So your dog may not need a major your affection reduction um, or your dog may need the exact opposite a very major affection reduction it really just depends on on the dog and your relationship the coolest thing about working with us though is we're not just going to tell you to do something we're going to work you through it and we're going to tell you why we see it for your dog and what we see for you and by the end everything's going to make total sense but this is just faq for the start while you're trying to research you know, us and if we feel like yeah. a good fit for you. Yeah, and, and what Laura said is really important is that we won't give you any absolutes. You'll never hear us say you have to do this, but we will tell you why we think it's valuable or important, and then we'll let you make your decisions and determinations from there. Yeah. So that's just kind of how we roll. Yeah. Hope cool. that helps.